Hi, good afternoon. This is Risha from the Alliance Trinidad office. Hi, is Paul Johnson in office? THA has been in the Caribbean since 2003. Initially as a country office, you know, as part of the International HIV AIDS Alliance. We have since then transitioned into being an independent organization. And that took place just recently, that took place in December uh, of of last year, so there's real excitement about that and also the opportunity that that brings out for CHA to be independent, strong, indigenous organization. In the last past two years, Alliance has grown a lot. When I came here, the staff strength was only 16 yes, I am. and now it is almost reaching 32. Uh, funding wise also, last year we got a new project from USAID. Uh, it's a 12 million US dollar project and it is for three years. So funding wise also I have seen Caribbean HIV AIDS Alliance growing very fast. We are member of PANCAM and our role in that is to contribute to the response of HIV and AIDS generally in the region. But our role is specific. You know, we've set our stall out that our area of activity is with vulnerable populations. We are unique to a lot of the Alliance family offices uh, globally in that the Caribbean HIV Alliance is a regional organization because we have offices in five other countries. So we have representation from St. Vincent, from St. Kitts, from Jamaica, um, uh, from Barbados, um, and, and, and so forth. So when we go from one country to the other, there's the assumption that we can move because it's called the Caribbean, that we can move from Trinidad to Jamaica and, and operate the same model. Well, actually, we know we can't. So what we do in Trinidad doesn't necessarily work in Jamaica or doesn't necessarily work in the Eastern Caribbean, say in St. Vincent, for instance. So that's why the difference is that you constantly have to adopt your approach to, although it's in one program, to respond to the different country needs. You begin to really appreciate that program delivery is not what we sit down on paper and articulate, but program delivery is essentially the model, the theoretical model, plus the contextual uh, social issues or context of that particular community merged into one being implemented. And the success of that program it's very much independent on how the balance is met between the two. Yes, it is important to sort of get a program running, but it, it has to be um, community-led, driven, designed, uh, signed off on, uh, articulated by, you know, it, it, it has to come from that community perspective. Never trouble no one. I'm a lady, I'm not a man. MC is my ambition. I come free nice and Our intervention strategy is quite a wide range of interventions. It varies from direct intervention uh, with key population, in particular men who have sex with men, sex workers and people living with HIV and AIDS. And that intervention might be through the provision of um, IC material, through direct one-man pair group intervention, um, strengthening CBOs through the provision of onward granting, so therefore we provide specific grants to community-based organizations, which enables them to build their capacity, strengthen their governance structure, and have the ability for them to be part directly in the response to HIV and AIDS in their community. So therefore, at the end of the day, it's not us who's doing the intervention, it's that we strengthen in the communities. Islands in the sun. The existing organizations that are there are community-based organizations. Often they're small, um, you know, um, groups of people who live with HIV or just generally members of civil society to come together and they don't have resources, they don't necessarily have the capacity, but they know they want to affect change in their community around HIV. So we work with them to try and realize their, their aims 
um, through providing technical support, some small grants that they can utilize as they desire. Um, and, and it's really about supporting you know, their efforts and their vision for what will change um, the HIV epidemic in Antigua. Yeah, I'm to that. I don't care what I'm saying. I want to know. <laughs> on the touch road, send boys to the resting place. Ask a shot in our face when gangsters touch the road. Um, in Antigua at the moment, we're there, we've got two on-road grants that we're in the process of. One is with Gender Affairs. Gender Affairs is an organisation which is government run but it's incredibly progressive and it works um, very closely with women who are affected by domestic and gender-based violence. Um, and the programme that they've developed is really to work with the police to sensitise them around uh, sexual violence and uh, the, the cause and effect of HIV that that would have. Um, in addition to that, they're hoping to do um, some a media campaign that will make very explicit to the public the very clear link between violence against women and and no, no, no. you don't love me and I know now. the peer based model that Char uses is it's, it, that's why it's the cornerstone of our work. Um, accessing groups who experience huge levels of stigma is, is a lot easier if the person who comes to that other person says, well, hey, I carry this burden with you um, and, you know, I can share your experience. I suppose the tribute has to be paid to our animators program because the animators, is, in many ways, is the front line. You know, it's the front line of our program because it's where, you know, people are going out at 9, 10, 11, 12 at night in hot spots, in places where no one goes to, in places which are hard to go areas, um, are accessing people that really would not come forward and do not feel confident to come forward and worst of it, don't want to come forward. We've been training our animators. Our animators um, have gone through a number of behaviour change communication trainings. They learn about participatory learning techniques and we're also going to use our animators when we roll out the rapid um, testing for, for HIV and AIDS. They will be trained in how to do the tests. The tests will be done in the community and they will also be trained. They are already trained on on uh, the counselling aspects of the testing so that the rapid tests can be done, the test c results can be uh, put forward to the client and the counselling and, re and appropriate referrals can be put into place all in one session. Oh, na, na. There is quite a strong link between the private sector and HIV and AIDS. While the private sector, because the private sector has resources, the private sector has a captive population that can be addressed through HIV and AIDS programming, the private sector stands much to gain or lose depending on whether or not they have active HIV and AIDS programs. And the youth, them, I get so cold. Whoa, whoa. One of the projects of the Caribbean HIV and AIDS Alliance seeks to increase the uptake of the use of female condoms among commercial sex workers so that women will have a device that is within their control for use. A social marketing campaign to make condoms and information available to the tourists in amenity kits in their rooms. It's still very much a pilot project, but it will be the first one of its type that actually targets the tourist as the person of interest. The core vision of EC Kaplan and Char in this program is, is really um, to 
give a voice to marginalised groups and to ensure that they're able to protect their sexual and reproductive health rights. Um, and it's really exciting to work with people that are from those communities and know the issues um, because, you know, I learn from them every day and that's, that's for me the most exciting part of the job. I think the Alliance's work has been very much community driven um, and that, that is what I love about it, that, you know, we're essentially working side by side with the community to make sure that, you know, their dreams and their issues are met with whatever assistance that we can provide. So it's a parallel approach as opposed to a top-down approach. We are the lead organisation in the region working with these most at-risk populations and it's getting us into the communities, it's getting us kind of like to the heart of, of somewhere that's really difficult for people to get, really difficult to get into and, and spread these messages. And it works really well. I've seen, I've been out with our animators and I've seen how they work in the field and it, it's really cutting edge stuff. It's uh, getting the message across in the right way. We're also able to address more difficult challenges that such groups face, such, such as in relation to stigma and discrimination through the work of the Alliance in empowering these communities we're able to create the advocacy um, and to help them also develop their own community empowerment strategies so they too become more empowered and are able to better advocate for changes that will bring positive improvements to their lives the generalness about raising awareness of the need for people to know their results, the need for people to change their behavior in terms of safe sexual practices. Um, you start to put that as a package that one organization is involved in. Then you start to measure this, the level of impact and the, the depth of impact that the organization has had um, in the region. What we need to do, I think, is to, is to blow our trumpet a, a bit more. We're not very good at blowing our trumpet. Uh, and if we did, I think we'll surprise ourselves in terms of the range and, and, and type of impact, the nature of the impact that we've, that we've had in the region. Tell me say one thing Nancy if you understand Who one thing Nancy if you understand What make them a talk about me ambition Say what make them a talk about me ambition Come and say some of them a ask me where me get it from Tell some of them a ask me where me get it from I told them no no it's from creation I told them no no it's from creation Bam bam